Serenity strained her eyes as she stared out across the fields of wheat, struggling to catch sight of the being that she'd seen just moments before. It had looked as if there was someone approaching town, a large group of beings, in fact, and that usually meant trouble. Caravans hardly ever traveled from town to town on foot anymore. Most of the time, when there was a big group traveling together, it meant that the enemy was on the move. Of course, it wouldn't have been prudent to jump to conclusions about that. Unless there was some kind of proof that the figures on the horizon were enemy creatures, it would have been a mistake to try to call the castle for reinforcements. That was why Serenity had been told to keep watching and see what they did. She had sharper eyes than any of the other guards, and she was more motivated than ever to protect her hometown since the birth of her first child only a few years before. Serenity had a passion for her work that went beyond any personal fears for her own safety. That was the reason why she'd joined the local military to begin with, and it was the reason why she was so dependable. Serenity continued to stare across the fields, watching the wheat and corn for any signs of movement, a job that was made infinitely more difficult by the light of the setting sun, which kept getting in her eyes. She squinted as hard as she could, trying to make out some kind of specifics about the figures moving on the horizon. For the moment, it seemed like they were just wandering back and forth as if talking with each other. That wasn't typical behavior for the enemy. Usually enemy creatures were far more ferocious than that. Even so, Serenity didn't dare to let down her guard. After all, there was no telling when they'd make their move. Pretty soon, the figures were starting to get closer to town, and Serenity tensed up a little. She couldn't predict for certain what their next move would be, whether they'd start running forward or make some attempt to attack, but the moment she was able to identify them as enemies, she planned to send a signal to the knights. Troma was a relatively small farming village with no real defenses to speak of, except a few guards and one captain. However, they also had the good fortune to be a mere ten minutes' ride from the Gellum Castle by horse, and that meant having almost instant protection when they sent a signal to the castle's inhabitants, because the Gellum Castle was where the knights lived. At one time, Serenity had thought about trying to become a knight herself, but as talented as she was at her work, she wasn't quite that talented. She was an excellent lookout and a top-notch guard, but the knights were on a whole different level. However, as Serenity briefly considered those things, the sun had sunk over the horizon just a bit further, and its glare on her eyes was decreasing. That was when Serenity started to see more clearly that the beings who were approaching town were definitely not human. They had large, bulky muscles, gray, discolored skin, and enormous fangs that rose up from their bottom lips on either side of their noses, each one nearly three inches long. They weren't wearing much armor, but they had helmets, and each was carrying a shield along one arm and a big axe with the other. They also had what looked like animal skin, covering their shoulders and chest down to their loins. The new arrivals were definitely agents of the enemy, monsters known as Jokram, though most people just called them orcs, and they were pretty terrifying because their enchanted nature gave them absolutely inhuman strength. The worst thing about the sight, however, was that they'd started running directly towards the town of Troma as soon as Serenity had recognized them, as if they'd realized that she'd discovered the truth about them, even from that huge distance away. Blast it, Serenity muttered, trying to fall back, but just then she saw that there were two children standing right behind her, both of them boys, and Serenity knew that if she left that spot to sound the alarm, those boys were going to get cut to pieces. She was feeling furious on the inside, even as the parents of the boys rushed forward to try to grab them and take them away, but it was already too late to run for the alarm. In fact, it might have been too late even if they hadn't been there. Quickly, Serenity spun around to face the invaders and barked orders to the parents of the children behind her. She knew that no matter what happened to her, she had to do what was best for the town. "'Listen to me,' Serenity exclaimed sternly. "'I want you to go to the guardhouse to the north end of town and have them raise the alarm for me. I'll try to stop these things.' "'I can't. You'll be killed!' the father of the family exclaimed. "'You can't help me. You don't even have a weapon,' Serenity replied desperately. "'We both have to do our jobs. You need to protect the town while I try to hold them off.' Hurry! However, those words weren't out of Serenity's mouth for even a moment before the enemy reached her position and one of them was already attacking with its axe. At that point, she couldn't afford to encourage the man to do that essential job anymore. She had to focus on fighting the orcs and hope that that man could handle the rest. Quickly, Serenity ducked out of the way of the first axe swipe and swept her spear along the ground, driving it between the legs of the first orc that had attacked, then twisting it and tripping him. In a moment, he'd fallen to the ground with a crash, but Serenity couldn't afford to finish him off because his buddies had already caught up and were swinging their own weapons at her with surprising speed. At that point, Serenity knew that she only had one possible chance to continue fighting with the orcs on even terms because there were so many. She had to use a special technique she'd been practicing with for emergencies. In just a moment, Serenity spun her spear around a few times, knocking aside the blades of several enemy weapons, and giving her just enough time to draw the sword that hung from her belt. In battle, the sword and spear hadn't been designed to be used together because of their weight and the balance problems it created when one tried to wield both. 
but Serenity knew that she just wasn't fast enough to beat those kinds of enemies unless she could use two weapons. That had been the reason for her recent training, and it had, she knew, paid off. She was already at the point where she could wield both weapons without any real difficulty. The only question was whether the strength of her spear attacks would be enough if she performed them one-handed. There was only one way to find out, however. In just a moment, Serenity had her sword in her right hand and her spear in her left, and the orc behind her was starting to get up. Quickly, she lashed out, striking him in the back of his head with the bottom of her spear, then sweeping her sword around. Almost at once, his head was completely separated from the rest of him. The other orcs, however, didn't hesitate at the sight of their companion's blood. In fact, if anything, they looked even more eager for battle. Quickly, two more rushed forward, swinging their axes, but Serenity was on the move again, diving off to one side, away from both attacks, then threading her spear through the legs of one of her attackers and impaling him on her sword on the way to the ground. Serenity was covered in orc blood as she moved to the attack again, but she wasn't deterred. She had a purpose that no amount of bloodshed could take away from her. She had to do whatever she could to protect her town and all its people. Three more of the monstrous orcs advanced on her from the front and sides, but she didn't wait for them to make their move. In just a second, Serenity dove directly towards them, brandishing her spear and sword in a well-practiced fashion. Only a moment later, two more had been beheaded, and a third was charging at her in a blind rage as more approached from the sides. The third orc seemed to have better aim than the others, and Serenity found that she had to use her sword to deflect the blow of his axe away from her before she could trip him with her spear. In just another moment, she was on top of him, raising her sword above his head and preparing to drive it downwards. Just then, however, Serenity heard the sound of grinding metal, and felt an aching sort of warmth along her back. In that moment, she knew that she was dying. One of the orcs had gotten the drop on her from behind and driven his axe into her spine. However, with her last ounce of strength, Serenity drove her sword downward, finishing off her fifth orc. She was losing so much blood that she definitely couldn't have gotten back up or fought with any more of them. But she could already see a gleam of metal on the horizon and knew that the knights were coming to Troma. When they arrived, the knights would succeed where Serenity had failed. They'd defeat the remainder of the orcs and save the people of Troma from them, including Serenity's husband and son. But in spite of that, Serenity was still worried about Sal and Don. She wished with all her heart that she could have lived just a few years longer to help raise her young boy. Serenity didn't have that choice anymore, of course. In fact, it was possible that she'd never really had a choice. Serenity had always done the only thing she believed she could have, the only thing she thought was right up to the very moment when she died. Sal swallowed hard as he watched the other guards silently removing Serenity's body from among the numerous orcs that the knights had helped to slay. The knight commander had said when he'd left that the knights had counted up the number of orc bodies and the number of orcs that they themselves had killed and determined that somehow his wife had managed to slay five of the beasts by herself before they'd even arrived. Most of the people in town seemed to find the news astonishing and there was talk of holding a ceremony to honor the fallen heroine of Troma. But to Sal, the whole thing was like one large joke. He'd never agreed with the job that Serenity had chosen, because he'd always feared for her life, and suddenly, she was gone. It was the most painful loss that Sal had ever experienced. Serenity had been the only person who'd really made him feel like a whole person himself. She'd been the only one who he really felt like he could share anything with. Both of them had struggled for years to love one another, to keep from offending each other, but on that day, Sal wished that Serenity had made different choices. He felt helpless and alone for the first time in months, an incomplete and broken man. That was when Sal swore to himself that no matter what, he was going to make sure that Don never made the same mistake. Don was the only one left who, even after a loss like that, could comfort Sal and make him feel better. The thought of his son gave Sal strength, even in the face of that monstrous disaster, and the determination to protect his son was growing in his mind through the entire week that followed, until well after Serenity had been buried. 